high school where you had the, the popular people coming down. And he always had his two little goons always before him, picking on other people, messing with other people, telling people, well, the big boss is coming. If he was a bully, he made sure they bullied you, take your money. So even bad people had disciples. But we have to understand that in this world that we have enough people bullying, getting over, doing what they want to do. So now we have to say, okay, where, where am I coming into play? How do God want to use me in this world that we're in? Because we're in a world that they pick on you for any and everything that you try to accomplish, that you try to talk about. When you're talking about something righteous, they don't want to hear none of that. When you're talking about something that the world want to hear, no matter if it's good or bad, then you're going to have that, those situations. Because we even see it in today's society about if, if it's not something they, they want to hear, they're just going to throw it to the back burner. Now we're going to uh, go to Mark. We're going to go to Mark. First Mark, we're going to start off at verse 1. No, let me see, verse 1. Let me get to that one. Mark 1. All right, I'm sorry, we're going to start at verse 14. Now after that, John was in prison. Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and said, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. So now we're seeing Jesus is on the scene. He's now is opening up a door to let the people know what's really, what's really going on. And now we have to understand once Jesus came on the scene, John was, I'm sorry, John was, was, has baptized him. Actually, let's go back to verse four. I'm sorry, verse three. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Jesus did baptize in the wilderness. I'm sorry, John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the redemption of sin. And there went out unto him all the land of Judea and there of Jerusalem and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. And John was clothed with camel hair and with a girdle of skin about, about his loins. And he did eat locusts and wild honey. Verse 7. And preached saying, there cometh one mightier than I am the laces of whom shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. So now John is preparing a way so we can see that the, the Savior is coming. Because as you can remember what Isaiah prophesied in Isaiah. So now we're seeing Christ coming about. So now we have to understand that even in our walk, we have to pretty much be ready to fight a fight, we have to be ready, just like with Chief Apostle. We have to be ready to be his disciples and be ready to do the, do the, the task that he can accomplish, like today. We have to be ready in season and out of season because now we understand we just can't be around here like children at home. Hey, I'm gonna wait till mama come home. Right. Well, we done saw mama cook grits, eggs, pancakes. You're hungry? Well, you go in there, you cook something simple. We, we're not asking you to cook a Thanksgiving feast because we have prepared you. Now, the other preparation is going to come over time, but this little simple stuff, you could be prepared and ready to, to take that task. Uh, verse 12 say, And immediately the spirit driven into him into the wilderness, and he was there in the wilderness 40 days tempted of Satan and with the wild beasts and with the angels ministering to him. So even in our own minds, no matter what we're going to accomplish, no matter what we're going to go through, we're going to be tempted because as we see, Jesus was tempted. But we have to understand that he's going to put things there to protect us. Well, we see Jesus had wild beasts around him. He even had his angels. 
So he was, he was being tempted by the devil, but he had the comfort. He had people there comforting him because we understand that everything that is made is made in his plan and in his purpose. So even in our fearless moment, the things that we, oh, wild beasts, animals, lions, bears, all of those things is, is, is made for us because Adam had to name them. So we have dominion over them so we could be ready to go. So now we have to understand when you be, when you have disciples, you have to be ready. So let's go to verse 21. Verse 21. And when they came into Capernaum, a straightforward on the Sabbath, he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they was astounded at his doctrine for the teaching. For, I'm sorry, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. So now, now you get to see, I'll come back to 22. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit and cried out. So even the people was astounded about the doctrine that was coming out of his mouth. Because even though we understand what the purpose of the scribes was, was to write down, was to understand the Old Testament. But when Jesus came, he was speaking with so much authority that they was astounded about what he was saying. So when you're, when you're preaching something and you see what other people is doing, you be like, okay, what's the difference? What's the difference in what they're doing, what they're telling me to do, but they're living something different than what they're preaching? Because even the people was like, well, he's preaching something that we're not used to seeing, but it has authority. So what can I do to understand? Well, as you say, they say the people sat around. They sat around want to hear from what he was saying because of the amazement that was coming out of his mouth. And as we understand in today's society, everybody wants to hear a word. Everybody wants to hear something for like they say for their itchy ear. You may be saying one thing, but next minute you know that you're seeing something totally different. Like I'll, I'll use this as an example, like, uh, been about seven years now. The the rap, the local rapper D1, he's a Christian rapper. But lately he he been he's been going against the social media stream. He's been telling some rappers, hey man, you you have to change your lyrics. You need to change this or change that. You 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 you're living one life, but you're preaching another life. So the world been on him really hot and heavy. But he he's taking it like a a, a, a grain of sand. He said, well. God has put this in me to do what I need to do, and I'm going to get out here and do it. Even though I'm going to go against what society is saying, I don't have no, nobody's here controlling me. And control is key because when you're not out there doing it for the fame, you come on, Ms. Clem, nobody, when you're not out here doing it for the fame, then it's easy. But when you need their money or when you need their cars or when you need their acceptance, it's hard. So understanding what God has put in our heart to do, because we have to, we have to understand that straight way, that straight and narrow road is hard. It's real hard. Mm -hmm. Because any day of the week, we could go down a, 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 a wide road. It's just like back in before they expanded the Huey P. Long Bridge. When you had to go to West Week or when you wanted to go down the Huey B. Long Bridge, you got your mind together. <laughs> because you are like, man, there's two lanes, there's narrow, I want to make sure I go straight because I don't want to have traffic backed up for a, a day. So even understanding that bridge back, I want to say about 10 years ago, is totally different now. Because now you got three lanes, you can go fast, you can do what you got to do. But that straight and narrow is the hardest, one of the most hardest things to do because you don't know, you, you, you're unsure. You're not sure what's going to happen. But when God has your back and when God's there for you, he's going to make sure at the end of the day you're doing what needs to be done. Amen. Amen. All right, now let's go to, I want to say we're still going to be in Mark. Let me make sure. You know how these notes are. Uh, let's go to 
we're going to Mark, second Mark. We're going to go to second Mark. We're going to start at verse 13. Okay, this is when, when, when Jesus started to, to call his disciples in. Let's go to second Mark. Actually, let's start at, start at verse 2. All right, second Mark, let's start at verse, sorry for y'all for this. All right, let's start at verse one. And again, he entered into Capernaum some days, I mean, after some days, and it was noisy that, it was noisy that he was in the house. A straight and many gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them. Not so much about the door, and he preached the word unto them. And they came unto him, bring one of the porcelain where he bored a four men. And when they could not come near unto him, they pressed. They uncovered the roof where he was, and when they broke it up, they let him down in the bay where he the sick and the man laid. And when Jesus saw their fate, he said unto the sick, Son, thy sins has been forgiven. But there was certain, now this is the crazy part in verse 6, but there was certain of the scribes sitting there and the reasoning in their heart. Why do it this thou speak blasphemy? Who can, for, who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus proceeded in his spirit that there that they're so reasoning within himself, they said unto them, Why reasoning ye these things in your heart, whether it is easy to say to the sick of the parson, their sins is forgiven. So even, even Jesus had the rebuke. But the crazy thing, this is the crazy thing as, as you read the word, it's like every time Jesus went around to minister within within the group it's always with Pharisees and it's always with scribes it's always with people around him just seeing what he's he's he was there to do and that baffled me because it is like okay were you all just follow every time you saw a crowd you just got into the crowd and just followed him or were you just there just to see what was going on so you can go back to tell the news about what was going on because you had to see it firsthand. And if you saw something firsthand that was totally against what you was preaching, it's like, it, it, it would to me, it would make you change your mindset. But even these people didn't see it that way because there you go again. You, you, you were preaching something totally different how you was living. Because if I'm out here running the streets and I see I shot a man and all of a sudden I see another man come and raise him from the dead, I'm going to be like, hold up, what's going on? You just was dead yesterday, but today you're alive. Now, I'm, I'm going to go find out, man, who, who is this person that's healing people or raising people from the dead? What can I do or, or, or where can I go to, to find out what he's talking about? But as you see, they always was there to try to get him confused in his own mindset of confusing what he was doing. But he knew who he was. He even said it. He he knew what they were talking about in their own hearts, so he had to get them straight. And, and that's where we are at today. Even though the, we get in different people, it's one Bible, but different religions yeah. in the same Bible that we preach. Yeah. That's one of the most confusing things to any believer. You have one Bible, but in that same Bible, you have different religion groups yeah. preaching something totally different. So how can you have people, you have people pretty much confused from the beginning because you got a Baptist, you got Church of God in Christ, you got Africans, you got Methodists, you got AME, you got everything in the world preaching this same word, but everybody believe what they want to believe. So when you come from one, when you come from one group to the next group, you're so confused because now we're in 
we are in a dilemma where we have to start preaching truth. And truth is key because once we understand the truth of this word, then we could we could heal people. And when we have to heal people, that's what a, that's what a deliverance coming at, because people out here they're hurting. And what I mean by they're hurting, because they don't know where they're gonna get money from to feed their children. They believe in this this book that people talk about. The preachers are rich, but the the memberships is poor. So they're like, well, why am I doing this if I can't benefit or if I can't get ahead? Because you're, you're, not, you're either not doing what God is telling you to do or you're just lost. So now people are running from church because they don't know which way to go. They're like, well, when I was in the world, at least I knew if I called such and such, I could get my rent paid for next week. Or if I, if I needed some money, I could go and, and steal. But they have this calling on their lives where they say, well, I don't want that anymore. This is what I really want. I want God to touch me. I want God to, to sanctify me. I want to be righteous. I want to do what needs to be done to get this word across. Amen. Amen. 